we go. Um, so, hello. Uh, I'm, of course, Colin Keegan. Um, oh. uh, I'm 10 years old. I'm a sixth grader at Wailing uh, School in Beverly uh, currently. I just moved this year. And um, school for me was interesting. Um, oh, wait. No. Oh, God. Um, I was a little bit um, bored in school uh, during my elementary school experience um, because I wasn't exactly, uh, I, I wasn't really challenged. Um, and I think it wasn't because the teachers weren't trying, it's just that we need a little bit more in our current education system. Um, so this, this speech and, and my workshop is really just a little bit about what I think could be done and can be done to make our current education system a little better, a little funner, um, and all around more engaging. So what I've done to keep engaged out of school. Um, signs all around us. And we can see it move so here. this is just a little and video. Tom's up on the deck. Tom, can we uh, have a little movement of the water here? And so we can see the water moving. If I was water coming along this way, and now there's no pressure on the wheel, if I hit this, I'd be trying to push it that way. Tom, we can get it going the other way now. And then I'd have a clear path to go, and the rudder would automatically straighten out. And again, because when this boat is going, it's going in a pretty good clip. And the rudder is a lot more mass than a small 40-pound boy. Um, this rudder would be straightened out, and the wheel would too, because this is a mechanical connection system. Um, okay, so that was a little clip that Wayne was talking about uh, with the rudder. <laughs> That's my uh, main thing, science all around us. Mm, excuse me, I'm just getting over a cold. Uh, and we are, we've been working on that for, uh, I think, two years now. Um, it's a science show, basically, by, kid for, by kids for kids. Um, and we actually just released our first episode a couple of weeks ago. Um, for $2.99 on Vimeo. And um, hopefully if some people who are at the conference can go and check it out, uh, we might actually be able to get the recognition we need to really uh, get science all around us off the ground because we're trying to get a media outlet to pick it up of some sort of another. Right um, also, I've done some stuff with BevCam, um, which is our local community access media in the Beverly area where I live. Um, and I'm really into aviation. Uh, my dad was a pilot, and I really like flying, so this is a short clip from my first time flying. Beverly Tower, three, two, four, eight, zero. Two mile final. Turkey, four, eight, zero, clear to land. Clear to land, four, eight, zero. Clear to land, four, eight, zero. Uh -oh. Okay. Yeah. All right. Good job. <laughs> That's your uh -huh. parking via. Uh, so yes, for the record, um, I did do most of the landing of a small aircraft. Uh, but yeah, that that's really fun to do. By the way, <laughs> it's actually not that hard at all. Um, I've also done a. What is this slide doing? Here we go. Um, a computing business called Caltech Computing. I'm not doing that as much now, um, but I basically do computer consulting services for anyone that um, needs it and for any educators that need it, dot, dot, dot. <laughs> um, I've done some sailing, of course, on the Thomas E. Lannan, the boat that Science All Around Us is based on. Um, I'm not sure if any of you know Khan Academy. Um, I do a lot of coding and math on that. Um, I do a lot of reading, a lot of watching YouTube videos of assorted interesting things, um, some gaming, and I'm gonna get a little more into that when I get to gamification and in my workshop. 
um, robotics, writing. Uh, there's a speech called Mask You that I've been working on for the past couple of weeks. Uh, that's been really keeping me busy. <laughs> uh, and a bunch of other things. So what do these things have in common? Because these are the things that I did to keep engaged. So let's look at how these could maybe be applied to school, right? So what do they have in common? And what um, can we use to implement them in the education system? Um, <laughs> so this is a, a picture of me when I was younger for Think Out of the Box. But um, I was interested in them, first off. It wasn't that it was a subject I wasn't interested in. It was personalized to my interests. Um, they were self-directed. There was no one telling me, you know, you have to do this thing. Um, it was just I decided um, what to do. Well, even if it was something like actually my teachers, my fifth grade teachers here, and I actually once did a thing with Khan Academy instead of homework. Um, but they were self-directed and I could choose what I wanted to do in them. It wasn't just stuff that I maybe wasn't interested in. Um, and some of the things that we look at in schooling kind of may not fit kids' interests, but with personalization and our modern technology, we can really change that, and I'm talking about that in a bit. Um, they were at my pace. I wasn't, they, they weren't behind me or ahead of me. Um, they would learn w with where I was. Um, they met me where I was at. Um, it wasn't like I had to go up from the beginning, or I had to, you know, learn a little bit to get up to where it was. It, figured out where I was, and I could learn from there. Um, they were fun. Uh, it's always good to have stuff that can be fun, and learning really should be fun. It's, it's a good thing in life. We need to continue doing it. Um, so learning really should be fun. There's no age limit. A lot of the things I do are um, a bit unconventional for someone of my age to be doing. Um, I could do the most anywhere, as long as I had internet access. So, uh, I could do most of the things that kept me engaged. I could explore the world with them, uh, getting a little bit into globalization, which I know is the topic of this conference. Um, and that's about it. But these are the four big ideas that kind of come out of that. Um, and my four ideas for like what can make our education system a little better. We have personalization, stratification, gamification, and globalization. Um, so I just want to address each of these topics uh, quickly. So personalization. Um, I, I know a lot of people talk about 21st century education, quote unquote. Um, by the way, that's my science project for fourth grade, third grade. Um, and we kind of have to move away from this, uh, from the education system that was developed really uh, a, a while ago. And, it's kind of as this like one size fits all education where it isn't really tailored to any one kid's needs. And there's maybe like one kid in a thousand that learns well in our current education system. But we need to make it a little more personalized. Um, technology can personalize education a lot more than the teacher can um, because it takes a tremendous amount of work to manually personalize a curriculum. But computers have been doing it for a while now um, in games, things like Khan Academy, 10 Marks, and it's really easy to personalize with technology. Um, can, can explore tangents and learn different things much easier. Uh, you can choose the topics that kids want to learn because kids are much more motivated to learn if it's something they're interested in. Um, for instance, someone we uh, know, they are, our son was a, not a very good reader. And he was really, really interested in video games. Um, now, for video games, a lot of the manuals, cheat books, etc., for video games are, of course, you have to read them. So he actually became a really good reader because he was interested in video games. And we can harness this. If we personalize education to a kid's interest, it's a much more, uh, it's a much greater motivator. And we talk a lot about motivators in my workshop with gamification. Um, 
So I'll just kind of skim over that right now because I don't have much time during the speech. But yeah, uh, it's really a lot better when um, you're interested in things you're learning. Stratification. Um, this is a thing I built in my treehouse. And um, stratification is really important for kids uh, to be able to excel. And stratification is basically um, the, the level kids are learning at and putting them at that correct level where um, you know, we're, we're not simply grouping kids all in you know, one grade because, for instance, I actually skipped first grade. Um, and I think it's more important to be with people that are interested in what you are interested in and are at your level than it is to be with people that are of your own age. Um, because you can talk about your interests to them, and it really just makes the learning experience a lot funner. Um, so a good example of why stratification needs to work is we're at Gillette Stadium, of course, the home of the Patriots. Um, and it, I'm not a big football fan, so someone else came up with this analogy for me, but... Um, <laughs> um, Anyway, there's this guy called Tom Brady. <laughs> and he, of course, plays with the Patriots because he's a really good football player uh, and he does very well in football. And it would be really weird to put him with, say, the Beverly football team um, or the Panthers. <laughs> but it doesn't kind of seem weird in the education community to put someone who's really excelling in learning with kids who are just maybe at their age or at their, you know, grouping. And um, in sports, we actually see a lot of things that can be transferred to education, come to think of it. Um, but this is just one analogy, and it really, uh, I think, shows how stratification can be done and kind of needs to be done. Um, because it, this would be weird, but yet, as I said, it's not weird for a kid in education who is excelling to still be just in their grade level that's for their age. Um, and then this is a picture of me climbing a rock wall. Uh, gamification. Uh, this is my favorite run. Um, and it's what my workshop is based on. Uh, so please come check out the workshop. Actually, we got a bunch of cool stuff, some cool uh, videos and things. Um, games appear in natural education all the time. And I think right now it's kind of interesting because the mindset about games in education is really, you know, oh, the, the game comes after the, you know, school work, or uh, the game is as a reward for finishing the school work. And um, gamification can actually be really good. Games are really good. Um, if we think about it in the wild, uh, in the natural world, gamification appears all the time in learning. Uh, whether it's a lion cub wrestling in the Serengeti to learn how to uh, hunt and fight. Um, you know, e even in like early development of our own species, humans. Um, <laughs> you know, we have little toys like this that of course teach motor skills. This is gamification actually, a very crude example of it, but gamification nonetheless. Um, a lot of parents use sticker systems with their kids. That's gamification. Um, it's not like gamification is unnormal. It's actually more normal than the education we have. Um, <laughs> and um, you can actually check out uh, some things like Minecraft for Education or Oregon Trail are good examples of uh, games. This is a Minecraft for Education blurb. Um, and then also, uh, check out uh, bit.ly slash masq2016 games, which is a bit link I set up to a YouTube playlist that has some really great stuff on gamification, and I'm going to be showing off some of that during the workshop. Um, globalization. Uh, I think that's actually the topic of the conference this year. Um, many tools exist for globalization, from Travel to Street View, Minecraft even, Hangouts. Um, and it's important that we really teach different cultures and customs. Uh, modern jobs and careers are increasingly globalized, 
And to keep up, we have to teach a little bit of globalization in schools. Otherwise, uh, kids aren't going to be fully prepared going into our 21st century world. Um, and this is just a cool story I wanted to tell about my personal experience with globalization. Um, my family, my family went on a um, trip to England a while ago, in I think 2012, and my mom and I were just browsing Google Maps, figuring out where to go, and then we saw this cathedral up by a place we were going, North Norwich Cathedral. And we thought, oh, let's check it out. So we were zooming in, and my mom goes, oh, sure, you can't get through that. You'll just zoom in on a wall stop. And then we actually went in. And um, the reason we didn't include an inside a street view picture is it's so accurate, it would look like a picture we took while we were there. Um, so of course, we actually went there, because we checked out the cathedral in street view. And it was actually a really cool thing, because back then, street view was you know, a new thing. Um, uh, now, now it just seems normal that you can do that. But anyway, globalization is really cool in schools. It's a fun thing to do. It's an interesting thing to do. I know personally it would have made my school experience a bit funner. Um, and I think all of these would. So anyway, this is my quote-unquote path to the classroom of the future. Um, and also want to note that I think a lot of times we talk about the classroom of the future as an ideal thing. And I think we need to start maybe thinking about it as a thing that is really accomplishable. Um, we have personalization, first off, allowing kids to learn at their own pace and their own interests. Stratification, allowing kids to learn at their own level, their own pace, etc. Gamification, um, which the PowerPoint messed up on. Um, <laughs> Um, but anyway, if you could read that, it says gamification, something or other, uh, making students more motivated and engaged. Um, globalization, finally, uh, opening the classroom up to the world. And then, finally, I want to note, if once we get this, this you know, technological classroom ideal type thing we've been looking for, it needs to continue evolving. Because Right now, we haven't really evolved our education system fast enough to meet our 21st century needs. And if we, it, run, it, we've implemented these changes to the classroom, but if we don't remember to keep evolving and keep um, staying at the cutting edge, we're going to end up falling behind the curve again as far as uh, adding to our 21st century education systems, things like that. So how do we implement this all in the classroom? And I'm pretty sure you're going to know what the answer to that is. But I just wanted to talk about really quickly, there's definitely other ways than um, technology also. Uh, for instance, my new school, Wearing, is actually doing a lot of stuff based on not technology. But uh, they have a lot of teachers and can devote a lot of time to doing the things they do. And in a normal school system, technology is definitely the way to go. So anyway, technology is the answer. Uh, that is my first computer, by the way. Um, I think I got it when a 25 gig SSD was actually good. And my, my new computer, which I just bought uh, for reference, has about 256 gigs of SSD space. Um, for all this work, we must accept technology. Uh, and I think there's a lot of fear um, kind of surrounding technology. Uh, f for instance, like Google search is dangerous. Uh, a lot of teachers I know don't like using Google pictures uh, to find stuff. But with modern virus protection and, I know, and with modern computers, it's very rare to get a, a, a virus because of our, our modern implementation of virus protection. Uh, kids will get on bad sites. Um, please talk to your tech people about firewalls if you're scared about that. Um, kids will get on bad YouTube videos. Again, talk to your tech people about firewalls. Ooh, a safe search. And kids will play games. Again, talk to your tech people about firewalls. Ooh, uh, you can use a lot of modern apps to monitor what kids are doing. Um, and I think there's definitely risk in 
technology. But then again, there's risk in books, right? I mean, we can have bad books that teach bad things. Uh, you know, books, you can doodle in them. But it would, uh, it would seem kind of silly to not allow a kid to use a book or to say like, oh, you can't read that page. It might have a virus on it. <laughs> um, it, it would just seem silly. So why do we do that with technology, right? Uh, we shouldn't. Anyway, um, thanks for listening to me talk, talk for what was probably over my time. Um, uh, I think all of these things would definitely have made my education experience funner, and I think it can definitely be implemented in the classroom. Uh, if you want more, please come to my workshop. Uh, we're going to have some really good stuff. Check out Extra Credits on YouTube. They have some great stuff on gamification. Um, and have a good time teaching. Every kid deserves to love learning. All right, thanks.